Uh, draft Armed Forces Act 2006, Continuation Order 2024. I call the Minister to move the motion. I beg to move that the Committee do consider the Draft Armed Forces Order 2024 to be approved. I am pleased to see you in the Chair today. Uh, the purpose of the Draft Order before us today is to extend for a further year the legislation governing the Armed Forces. This reflects a constitu constitutional requirement under the Bill of the Rights of 1688 that a standing army, and now by extension the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force, cannot be maintained without the consent of Parliament. In our increasingly dangerous and disordered wor world, I need not remind the Honourable and Right Honourable Members of the importance of our consent today. From the front lines in Ukraine, where there are over a thousand casualties a day, to cyberspace with over hundreds of attacks in the UK today, our allies, our democracy and indeed our international rules-based system are under daily attack, threatening our physical and economic security, our hard-won freedoms and undermining national cohesion. In the face of this, the dedicated men and women of our armed forces selflessly and courageously step forward, day and night, with great personal sacrifice to deliver upon the government's first and most important duty, to keep this nation safe and protect our citizens. But it's not just about safety. It's about security and it's also about stability. We cannot have prosperity without a safe, secure and indeed stable nation. We cannot be safe at home and strong abroad without them. They're critical security, diplomatic and humanitarian national assets. Whether they're exercising the NATO allies, training Ukrainians and getting the military aid to their hands, or indeed delivering life-saving food and aid to families in Gaza or supporting flood victims in Poland. Every five years, we collectively must renew our consent for this important work by an act of parliament. Today's draft order will keep in force the Armed Forces Act 2006 for a further year until December, de until December 2025. This ensures our armed forces can continue to serve and maintains the provisions that underpin the system of command, justice and, of course, discipline. It's a privilege to seek cross-party support from the Committee for the Order, and in doing so I pay tribute to those who have served, those who are serving, and the wider armed forces community. By defending our country, they gave the ultimate in public service, and I beg to move. The question is that the Committee has considered the Draft Armed Forces Act 2006 Continuation Order 2024. The Shadow Minister. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair, and may I start by paying tribute to the Minister and welcoming him to his place. The Labour front bench and indeed our whole House, I think, is greatly enhanced by his presence among us, and I pay tribute to him and to the speech he's just made, and I look forward to working with him on uh, the important matters that we share in common in, our, in this brief. Now, the previous government renewed the Armed Forces Act 2006, including through the Armed Forces Act 2021 and the Armed Forces Continuation Order 2023, and of course we support this draft order today. And as the Minister mentioned, this reflects a constitutional principle that goes back many hundreds of years to the Bill of Rights in the, uh, in the 17th century, uh, when Parliament insisted on uh, its own right to approve the presence of a standing army. This was, of course, in the days when the rest of Europe suffered under absolute monarchy, and it's as if, who knew, our Parliament could insist on rights and liberties of British subjects on its own. So I'm very pleased to be standing in the tradition set all those years ago. And as is customary in these debates, I want to pay tribute to our armed forces. I have the great privilege of representing East Wiltshire in Parliament. Thousands of serving personnel uh, are stationed there at the camps and garrisons at Tidworth, Netherhaven, Bulford, Lark Hill, Perham Down, Uphaven. I was recently taken up onto Salisbury Plain by the commander of the Army South West and he showed me with a sweep of his arm where he said 20,000 British service personnel and their, and their families live. So I genuinely do represent what I call the home of the British Army, despite what it says outside Aldershot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have the best people in the world serving in our armed forces. They keep us safe in a world fraught with risk and threats and we must give them the tools we need. And so the party opposite will not be surprised to hear me reiterate once again the absolute imperative for a clear pathway for increasing defence spending to 2.5% of GDP by 2030. This is an absolute paramount requirement. And if the government does not do this now in this debate or at the budget in a few weeks, there is a real risk of defence cuts at the worst possible time for our armed forces uh, when countries around the world are doing exactly the opposite. They are rearming, they are increasing defence spending in order to prevent 
escalation and keep us safe. And as we discovered at oral questions yesterday, the ministers could not even commit that defence training or research and development will have their budgets protected uh, in the upcoming budget. So we should not beat around the bush. Cuts in these areas would undermine our armed forces and our security. So our support for this order is total, but we are implacably opposed to any cuts in spending, including by delaying the increases, which the government is at least in principle committed to in due course, as they say. So that is the real test of our commitment to the armed forces, whether we're prepared to make the spending commitment soon. Thank you. Um, uh, members uh, should bob in the normal way if they would like to speak. Do I see anybody from the Liberal Democrats? Yeah, Helen Maguire. Thank you. Um, I'd like to express my uh, support for the Armed Forces Act, um, Orders 2024. Ensuring the security of our country must be uh, the foremost priority of any government, and we must always take defence seriously and work with allies to protect all of our freedoms. The Conservative government's approach to defence was negligent, leaving our armed forces under-resourced and vulnerable. Reducing troop numbers by 10,000 was reckless, and delays in procurement have deprived our armed forces of the tools that they desperately need. Yeah. Further, service personnel veterans have been failed, with insufficient mental health support, poor housing and inadequate care. Our military personnel simply deserve better. Although this legislation is straightforward, its significance cannot be overstated. It allows us to honour our armed forces while also questioning what the government is doing to ensure that they are well prepared and supported, including providing the necessary resources for procurement, ensuring equipment is adequate and free from health risks, offering sufficient accommodation, <coughs> supporting their mental health, maintaining an adequate personnel level. Moreover, as a, member, a former member of the military police, I understand firsthand the importance of discipline in the military. It is discipline that binds every service member, ensures the chain of command functions and enables operational success. This is why the Armed Forces Act 2006 and its annual extensions through orders like this is so critical. This act empowers commanding officers to maintain order and enforce discipline. We must thank the continued work of our brave, our brave armed forces at home and overseas. We support the passage of this order and look forward to hearing what advances <coughs> the government makes with the Strategic Defence Review. Rachel Blake. Uh, thank you. And can I thank the Minister for bringing this forward and welcoming him uh, to this place. I'm grateful for the uh, visit that we were able to make together to see the innovation that's taking place in my constituency at St Mary's Hospital. I wanted to particularly welcome this order as we approach Remembrance Sunday and a period of reflection about the service of our armed forces and also to welcome the fact that this government is al already making such progress on housing for veterans. Uh, uh, my constituency contains barracks, but also some housing that has been left in terrible quality, and I look forward to working on that particular issue to support veterans uh, in their housing situation going forward. I see no other ministers. Can I ask the minister to sum up? Uh, I'm grateful for the cross-party collaboration uh, on this order, um, and support for the committee is given to the draft continuation order. Just to come back... Um, and answer some of the, or provide a bit more detail on some of the points. Um, the first one is for uh, the, the Honourable Member from East Wiltshire. Um, as a serving, ex-serving member of, of the military, I understand the difficulties in balancing the budgets, and it's over the last 24 years, which includes the 14 years of which you've been in government, I've been through different exercises that have been cut, chopped and changed because of difficulties in balancing that, that budget. That doesn't mean to say in any way, shape or form that we're going to cut training, but there are decisions that were always made within the system uh, to ensure the resources go in the right place at the right time for the required effect. Um, the second one is on the route towards 2.5%. We absolutely, as the Prime Minister has said, have committed to that, um, but we must do that in a balanced trajectory at the right time and again at the right place to do that too, too early um, or indeed too late, so it's about getting the timing exactly right, but there is no doubt that the commitment sits with this government to move towards 2.5%. Um, I would also like to cover off uh, just the, the, the Honourable Member as well. Um, there are some excellent programmes that have been running for some time now, which we as, as this side of the, the House will absolutely continue to move forward, and that's on mental, physical uh, and housing. Um, we're also looking at different methods to redesign some of our veterans' uh, support, and we will be publishing a veteran strategy next year, um, which will outline some of those uh, different projects. And then finally, to this side of the House, the support to housing, uh, as mentioned by the Prime Minister uh, in his conference speech, is absolutely um, uh, going to move forward. 
Um, we're looking to uh, 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 ways of making sure that every veteran has access to housing across the country and those that serve um, get what they or the deal that they deserve. Um, I'd like to thank the honourable and right honourable members for indeed upholding the constitutional position of our armed forces. Thank you. Ma'am. The question is the committee has considered the Draft Armed Forces Act 2006 Continuation Order 2024. As many are of that opinion say aye. Aye. On, on the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order, order.